What up, Fortnite fam? It's Matt back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help make you a better Fortnite player. Season 2 is finally here, and it may have caught some of you by surprise. Nevertheless, there are so many cool new additions to the game, and we can't wait to explore them all with you. Today, however, we're going to catch you all up to speed on how to get the most out of your FPS and lower that ping so you can start the season rocking like a pro. So, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about resolution. If you're used to playing PC games, then the default for you has almost always been adjusting your resolution to fit your PC screen. After all, if your PC can run games at 1080p, why sacrifice that when you could be playing games to the best of your ability? Well, competitive gaming is a bit different, and while resolution can make your game look prettier to look at, what competitive gamers need the most is FPS. FPS will allow you to have a much smoother game, and if everyone else is hitting numbers above 144 and you're stuck at 60, then you're going to find that other players are going to have an easier time beating you due to the smoothness. Playing the game at 1656 by 1080 or 1400 by 1050 is something many players do when they want to crank up their FPS. If you've never considered doing this before, then it might sound crazy, but this is actually a really smart move, especially if you've been struggling to get your FPS up for the new season. The most obvious advantage for this is getting a boost in your FPS. The game isn't working the system as hard, this is because with a smaller FOV, there's a lot less going on the screen at all times. So with a smaller FOV, does that mean you're giving up the ability to see your opponents? Well, not entirely. While lowering your resolution will make your FOV smaller, it does come with an advantage. I'm talking about bigger opponent models that are easier to spot and therefore easier to aim at. So, consider using a more stretched resolution if you're struggling to hit a good competitive FPS. Remember the golden rule, 144 is the number you should be aiming for. If you can hit this, then you'll be up to competitive standards. Have you already got a good FPS? Well then you should start training with it right away. Click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com. There you can learn about how to master your Fortnite skills, and even consult with some of our pro coaches who can unleash your unrealized potential. So check it out and take another step closer toward becoming a pro gamer. So now onto the next big FPS booster, and that is your settings. If you're on PC, then you can definitely boost your FPS past 120 with the right settings. The first thing on the menu is the frame rate limit. Once again, if you're used to playing games on unlimited FPS, then you might want to reconsider. For starters, FPS doesn't just determine how smooth your game is, but it can have an actual effect on your skills and muscle memory. For example, if you mastered your aim at 144 FPS and then suddenly found yourself playing the game at 60 FPS during a match, the difference in smoothness would cause you to miss your edits and miss your shots. You're going to be going faster or slower than you expected, so your timing is going to be absolutely thrown off. The most obvious choice here is to make sure your FPS is as stable as possible. So yes, you should actually try to limit your FPS. So what exactly should you limit your FPS to? Well, to know this, you should know the refresh rate of your monitor. A good gaming monitor could have a refresh rate anywhere over 120. This will determine how many frames per second your monitor will actually be able to display. So if you're using a 120Hz monitor, it wouldn't actually be able to display anything above that. If you don't know the refresh rate, then take a moment to check it right now, and then follow the rest of our guide. However, instead of setting your refresh rate to match your monitor, you should set it just above instead. This will give you a much more stable frame rate. An example of this is if you want to consistently hit 144 FPS on a 144 monitor, you should actually set it to 165. So even if your game is running at 165, your monitor will always be displaying 144 unless it dips below that. The next two settings you should be looking at on your menu should be the brightness and colorblind settings. Brightness isn't always the most important setting to mess around with when it comes to FPS, so we'll only go over it briefly, because leaving it higher can help some players make opponents easier to spot. Some players have even found using colorblind settings useful for seeing through the storm. Set this to Tritonope and see if these settings work for you. So with brightness out of the way, we can get right back to the settings that will actually boost your FPS. Let's start with the first item in this section, 3D resolution. 3D resolution is a setting you would like to keep at 100% for as long as possible. The lower you put this setting, the worse your game is going to look. If you tried playing a game at 10% 3D resolution, you would find that it would be a nightmare to navigate. Good luck being able to see your opponents like that. However, 
3D resolution is also a good way to bump up your game a few frames. While it is not recommended to be the first setting you tinker with, despite it being the first on the list, a good place to cut corners is leaving it at 90. Things will only look slightly worse, and exchange you will get a much better frame rate. Before you do this though, consider some of the other options that we're going to go over next. Speaking of next, that would be view distance. The higher the view distance, the further you will be able to see in game. This can help you spot enemies in the distance, but really it's up to the player to decide whether or not to lower their setting. If you're good at fighting and keeping up your defenses, then getting to the end game should be easier. If that's the case, you could consider lowering the view distance. For textures, you could consider leaving them at medium. As long as you can tell the enemies apart from the background and you know which structures are which, then textures aren't as important if you want to play competitively. In fact, many pros tend to use medium textures even if their setups are capable of much more. That's because FPS is just that more important to the game. The last option on these settings are meshes. There are only really two options for meshes, and placing it at low can give you the FPS boost you need to succeed. Meshes can affect how your builds look before you place them. Luckily, they aren't always necessary for you to run a good game or play competitively. If you can get used to the way they look, then putting on low meshes will allow you to raise your FPS even more. Do this, and you might even be able to play on that 100% 3D resolution. Keep in mind, PC has some of the more customizable settings, so finding a good combination that fits your needs as a player can mean mixing and matching based on your priorities. So experiment, get those frames up, and don't run the game as if you were playing on a potato. The next thing on the list is reducing your ping. Ping can be a nasty detriment that can mess you up during the most important parts of the match. However, unlike FPS, it's something that you can't always control. Luckily, we are here to help you find ways that you can make the most out of your internet connection. A high ping can cause a delay with your inputs. Like FPS, a high ping can be detrimental towards building techniques due to the fact that they slow you down. If you've been playing on creative, then you might have noticed that playing Battle Royale actually gives you a much higher ping than before. This is due to the fact that there are more players involved. If you're using Wi-Fi, then the first step you should take is moving closer to the router. This will allow you to get a better connection since there is less space between you and the source. Unfortunately, this is only possible if you happen to have control of where the router is in your home. If you live with your parents, there might be a set location in the living room and moving your whole setup might not be optimal. If you live alone, however, you might consider moving your router closer to your room if possible. If you have the power to move up close and personal to the router, you might consider using a wired connection for your internet instead. You can do this by connecting a LAN cable directly into your router's port. This is a much more direct way to connect to the internet and will reduce ping as much as possible. If you don't have the most powerful internet plan, then this is a good way to get the most out of what you have, and that can make a significant difference. Before you jump out of the battle bus today, don't forget to visit ProGuides.com and find out how our coaches can help you become the best that you can be. Well, that wraps things up for today. Are you excited to start digging deep into Season 2 Resistance? We sure are. So drop a like and smash the subscribe button to stay up to date with the brand new season as it unfolds. If you have anything you'd like to learn, then feel free to leave a comment, and who knows, we might just answer it someday. So remember, skills are important, but game performance plays an equal part in that. So make sure you're running those competitive settings, and you'll be sure to improve. Once again, my name is Matt, and we'll see you on our next exciting video.